Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a very exciting video where we present to you our new taxi, the BMW G80 M3 that's it, I guess. Competition? Competition. <laughs> and let's just like immediately address the big elephant, no thrills in the room. When yeah. one and a half year ago, we were sitting uh, in Italy and saying how when the car was unveiled, how it was the ugliest car and how you would never buy it. And here we are. So did yeah. BMW give it to you for free? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, BMW didn't get it for free. I actually bought it through a dealer, paid very close to full price for it. Mm -hmm. not, not enough to... You know, not enough a discount to be too excited about. But mm -hmm. um, look, I mean, the thing is this. I can tell you that the last weeks we've been planning the design and everything, and I'm still having the hardest time getting around the shapes, the lines, the grills. <laughs> you know, I'm having a hard time with it. But I will give BMW credit this summer. And, and I didn't do anything about it yet because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I knew when I drove it that I had a problem on my hands. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, when we drove the when M4. We drove, when we drove the M4. M4. So we drove an M4. Um, BMW was gracious enough to let us drive one of their cars, which if you think, you know, what we said about the look of it, um, you know, the, the jokes we made and that we probably still will continue to make, um, that they said, hey, you guys can take this car, a, a, a G82 M4 of ours that we BMW M own, and you can drive it on the Nürburgring, the mm -hmm. most dangerous track in the world. You know, like that was... A, a big one from them to give it to us. Went out on the track and started driving. I got two corners in and had Bora with me. He was filming and, and he, was, he was in the passenger seat and I looked at him and I said, this thing's amazing. Mm -hmm. I can't stand looking at it. Mm -hmm. But from here, the way that it drives, the way the front end feels, you know, you're, you're going into the turn and, and you just need a little bit more. You barely lift on the throttle and it just actually bites down on the front and rotates the back around. It was amazing. You can make the car drive the way that, honestly, my E92 had to be built completely to drive like this, mm -hmm. right? To, to give you some of this feel and feedback and to have the front end grip. The E92 had to be completely built, kinematic, suspension, all this stuff to feel like, you know, to give you hints of that feeling. Yeah. This, in my opinion, is one of the best BMW M car stock in terms of do you want to drive it and go be fast? Yeah. It's still heavy. You, you're not going to get around that. But that's where we are today. But from the from the driver's seat, the thing's unreal. Yeah, I think we had to, you and I had both the same conclusion that we got 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 in. We drove it, and we were just absolutely blown away by its performance. Like you said, it's the best BMW M, but I think it's also the best car in its price range, its category, so. and to what you can do it being a GT car, but the same car, right. same time also being extremely fast. And I'm excited to see, yeah, where we are going to take it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, right now it's obviously just getting the PPF done. So that was important for us. We're going to be moving it around, getting the next step. So it needed to get the PPF done. Um, one very interesting thing is that every car that we've had PPF that we run exclusively on the track, what happens? It gets a big enough stone through it that mm -hmm. you're going to have to repaint the hood anyways yep. or the front bumper. So this time what we did is we went ahead and double wrapped the front. So, so this isn't your typical YouTuber, got a new car, we're going to detail <laughs> gonna the PPF. Wrap it. No, we're, we're, the, the PPF is done, and, and uh, there's probably some, some close-up shots that you guys can see. But the idea here is to do PPF for a reason, mm -hmm. not for driving to ice cream, not for tooling around. The PPF on this is intended to be ready to do thousands of laps on the Nürburgring, you know, tailing cars, getting rocks thrown at it. Who knows, who knows you know, what else it's going to see. But... We went ahead and did on all of the leading edges, the bumper, the hood, um, we went ahead with a double layer matte PPF just to give an extra layer of protection to help these stone chips and everything like that. And if you guys are thinking about doing that with your car, maybe it's a good idea you know, to, to do PPF, consider doubling up on the areas that you're worried about if you're gonna do a lot of track use. Yeah, yeah, for that big thank you to Unicat Wraps for uh, providing this service, this quick service as well, yeah. which is done very quickly. But now let's move on to the other mods. What mods are planned with it? Yeah, I mean, right now, the, the next step, uh, the, why we had to get this PPF done so fast was because it's going to go to KW now. Mm -hmm. They're going to use it basically as their production car or what would you call it? Um, development, development car. car uh, in order to develop their full competition suspension for this platform. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be neat for them to be able to take the car. It's going to be neat for us as well. They're going to be able to put on their four-poster rig, design, develop everything, and then we're going to immediately get to bring it to the Nürburgring 
and test it with two, three, and four people in it with very fast drivers, very capable drivers pushing this car and seeing what it's capable of. So not only is it going to benefit us, but I'm really excited to work on, you yeah, know, on the product, on this product of saying this thing truly has been tested on a taxi yeah. and not a slow taxi. You know, we're not going to be going around putting around. If you guys have ever, you know, ridden with, with uh, Tim and gone out and gone full blast, you know that, that he's, you know, <laughs> he's not much as holding him back. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. So suspension's going on. What, what next is planned? Well, I mean, the, the thing that we're working on now is just the braking system. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we knew from day one that the car drives fantastically right mm -hmm. now. So any suspension work we're going to do is just going to add on top of that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're working on uh, the kits. As you lower the car, we need to raise the diff. So we're working on the, the diff relocation kits um, for that. We're working on some uniballs, some toe correction. We're obviously going to measure the toe, the bump steer, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So we want to work on some new toe arms. And we've already started working with a couple companies who are very, I would say, relevant in this scene. So again, we're helping to develop a lot of these things the way that we want them the parts that we want. We don't want parts that rust out. We don't want parts mm. that seize up that we can't get the uniballs for. So we're yeah. looking to help build kits that are going to make it accessible and easy to maintain and easy to operate. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at obviously the livery. That's a, a huge mod, right? You know, we're looking at, we're looking at the, 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 the livery and having a hard time with it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm struggling with it. I think, you know, Misha and I have been looking at a lot of different you know, options and versions, and, options and, and, and the just, angles, the lines, yep. they make it very challenging to put some, on something nice. Exactly. So that's one thing. But another one, we're looking for arrow. You know, yep. We, uh, we want to get a wing and we want to get a front splitter. We found front splitters that we like. We want to make sure it all matches with the rear wing because we've definitely noticed huge benefits out of the F80, having that rear wing at high speeds through Schradenkreuz and the likes. I've got videos of Moritz absolutely flying through Schradenkreuz with the with the F80 fully fully geared up, you know. Mm -hmm. and obviously, that downforce in those scenarios really comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are probably our main mods for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we want this to really be like when we did the F80. A lot of you guys remember, but even maybe a lot of you don't because that was four four and a half years ago. Yeah, it that was we, first, we were doing this project. Action. Yeah, and we really took the F80 in a cool way that we went from. Um, basically the upgrades like we're going to do now, which consisted of suspension, aero, and a stock interior on up through the interior mods in the following years. And, and you guys got to follow along with that. And we had people that came in rides almost stock, this mod, that mod, and that's really cool. So we're excited to start from there as well. Mm -hmm. Now we're, uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to put the ProTracks on. Right. We've actually already fit the ProTrack 19s. Mm -hmm. So we've got ProTrack 19s that are going on. Uh, we're doing the tire selection and everything uh, as we speak. We're getting all the sizing and everything like that. Uh, endless brake pads will go in mm -hmm. uh, immediately, obviously. So we're going to look, obviously, at discs, pads, tires, wheels, um, exhaust. I've, sound, I've heard some beautiful exhausts on this car, some stuff that actually sounds really good. We just need to see about two. Mm -hmm. uh, this car is running road legal as a taxi on the Nürburgring, so we have to meet all local you know, mm -hmm. laws, if you would, and, and compliance. But... Mainly right now, it's going to be to develop a car that's exciting to drive, which makes it exciting for the passengers. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as the years go, we're going to decide, do we take it as far as the F80 or not? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So what's happening with the F80? I, th I'm gonna, I think I'm going to sell it. Yeah? Yeah. So I told you guys that I may never sell it because it could be a fun car to, you know, let the f kids grow up and drive and everything like that. But one thing that I've learned is... Um, well, let me say if I've learned it, I've always said that I'm not a car collector. Mm -hmm. I've always said that I don't want to just keep cars around and need more garage space and more garage space. And if I keep the F80, that's going to become a collection car. Mm. You know, it's not going to be a car that I'm going to be able to drive and, and, and experience that much because we've got cars like this to take customers out in, to take friends out in, to go and use. So that means the F80 is going to sit there. Mm. And we've had a lot of cars at Apex in the last years. And what it does is it makes it where we're always moving stuff around we're losing efficiency by taking cars from here to there. So I think immediately the car will probably come to my garage. Mm -hmm. And then when I can decide, okay, I can part with this, then, <laughs> then, then I'll let you guys know at that point. But I think ultimately it will go up for sale. Okay. Um, and uh, it'll be very fair priced, I would have to say. Okay. You know, because it's obviously got a lot of value in terms of what's been done to it. But it's on its third motor, which I think is a good thing because the new motor is fresh. Mm -hmm. There's another reason to go ahead and say, okay, it was time. The, the car's been completely refreshed. It's ready, to, you know. It's basically ready to go. Yeah. If somebody wants to enjoy it, so it'll be sad. It's kind of a part of Apex, but one thing that we have to understand is that we're trying to do different things. You know, Misha's always developing for his channel. 
we're always developing together for Apex. Mm -hmm. And if we just say this is our car yeah. for the next 10 years, then that's not developing. That's not coming to the forefront of technology yeah. and building on what is, I, like I said, the front end on this thing, I just can't get out of my head. I'm excited to drive it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm very excited to drive it. Yeah, well, I guess that uh, leads up to the final point uh, regarding the possibility to drive it. I guess the car will be available immediately once the track opens. Yeah, the track is set to open on 12 March, you know, obviously. Depending on the weather. It's going to depend on weather and I guess construction progress mm -hmm. based on that weather. Um, the, the day that the track opens, this car will be on track as a taxi. Anybody that's booked in the F80 will automatically get converted into this. Mm -hmm. um, and the price for now will stay at 299 Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we try to do this year at Apex is keep pricing as similar as possible. I don't know where in the world we haven't experienced inflation, mm -hmm. whether it be the housing market, food market, you know, uh, other hobbies. Inflation is real. Prices of fuel are going up drastically. Prices of tires, other consumables, everything's going up. And we're trying to hold as, you know, as long as reasonable. So I would expect that maybe sometime this year there might be a price increase. But at the moment, we're definitely going to stay for the first couple months at 299 for this. Mm -hmm. So book yourself in or get yourself yeah. a voucher for to experience it yeah, later any, in the year. Any, anybody that books anything now, we're never going to say, oh, yeah, that voucher mm -hmm. was, you know, for two ninety nine. dollars and now it's, <laughs> it's 800 you know. <laughs> that, that would be nice. <laughs> and so um, people who had booked the F80, they go yes, automatically in this. Here. And for those of you that come and say, oh, I really want to experience the F80, the F80 has been around four years. You know, yeah. it's been, the, 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 there's been four years of opportunity to get in it. Obviously, we've had breaks with COVID and different things like that, but the car has been around for four years and um, we need a new project. And the way the license works is we can't have 10 taxis. Mm. You know, if we could have multiple taxis and the availability was there, I would say, okay, you know, for the first six months, we'll run them side by side and maybe you could go from one to the other. But with the way the program works, we have to take a taxi and stick with it and run it. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think you guys are going to really love this because it drives phenomenal. Yeah, it's fast. It's very, yeah. very fast. Exactly. This is what we already shown in our review with them for. You still need to publish your video. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But you know what? I didn't make one because all that was going to happen was people were going to say, Robert, are you going to buy one? Yes. Right? And the answer would have been yes. And yeah. I knew I drove it and I got halfway done with the lap and I was like, I'm going to buy one of these. Yeah. And before anyone says, oh, you put your foot in your mouth. No, I, st I still, everything I said, yeah. whether it's about the looks of it, how I wish the marketing team respected the in buyer's wishes and everything like that. If I wasn't a track user of this car, yeah, I wouldn't own it. I think that's a very good point though, to end it to the transparency and, uh, and honesty and uh, sticking to our uh, rules. Well, I guess that's pretty much it when it comes to introduction. I hope we, we covered most of it. Of course, if you have any questions, let, uh, let us know in the comments. We will try to answer them. Uh, we'll answer them. Most of them, and yeah, I'm excited for the first laps earlier. I'm very excited later for it. It's this year. Fun. Cool, awesome. Well, thank you guys, and looking forward to seeing you in the, our new taxi, the G80 M3 competition. What we didn't address, it's a rear wheel drive version. Rear wheel drive, yes. It's it's not yeah. X drive. No, because it's not really that. Yeah, I mean, needed. what we'll find out is when you have a capable driver in a car, the all wheel drive is not going to make it faster. Yeah. When you're carrying momentum through a turn and you're doing all this. If you watch, um, you know, basically you watch Tim out in the GT2 and you see a turbo, he will absolutely annihilate the turbo in the GT2. And it's just because he knows how to carry momentum. He knows how to drive that car. And that's what happens even in something like this. I always have said, like before we got the Yaris, I always said that all wheel drive is just gonna make you hit the wall faster mm -hmm. in the rain. That's all it's gonna happen. Yeah. You know, the, or in the snow. Yeah, in the snow, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't, I would never expect to have any more speed. This is already a car that's combating weight and mm -hmm. drive, you know, heavy drivetrain, heavy, heavy overall chassis. And I want to, to have something that keeps the weight down. Yeah. And, and I also less components to replace. Less, less components, less wear and tear. I, I'm, I haven't looked too close to how it works, but I mean, I'm assuming you have a differential in the front. There's just one more thing to go wrong and one more thing to worry about. Mm -hmm. And even in the wet, this car will be no slower than, than its all wheel drive counterpart with the proper, with the proper driver. Exactly. So. Well, good. Then looking forward to it.